In this tutorial, we'll discuss the pick tools Pick and Area Pick. We shall look at the pick tool first. With the pick tool selected, move the cursor over an entity without clicking on it, and it highlights in a dim version of the highlight color. This will give you a preview of what would be picked if you were to click at this point. This is referred to as preview picking. Click on the highlighted entity, and it is drawn in the full highlight color. Click a blank area to deselect all picked entities. To select a face, outline, segment, or point of an object, you have two choices. The first choice uses the command key on the Macintosh, or the control key on the Windows platform. Now let's try the command key first. Move the cursor over the object parts while holding down the command key. This will change the preview to the next best available object part. Keep the cursor over an object part for a moment and a hint will describe the preview highlighted object part such as a face, segment, or point. If the cursor is over a point, the point will be highlighted. If the cursor is directly over a segment, the segment will be highlighted. If the cursor is over a face, the face will be highlighted. Clicking with the command key down will pick the highlighted object part. The second method uses the tab key on both Macintosh and Windows. Now move the cursor over the object part. Then hit and release the tab key. The next best object part will be highlighted. Sometimes there may be more than two choices based on the cursor location over the object. In this case, hitting the tab key repeatedly will cycle through all the choices available. Clicking after hitting the tab key will pick the currently highlighted object part. By default, only one object or object part can be picked at a time. Clicking on an entity that is not picked selects just that entity, and any other entities that are picked will be deselected. To pick multiple entities, hold the shift key down while clicking. This will either add or remove an entity from the pick set depending on whether the entity is already picked. Whether an object will be added or removed is indicated with a minus or plus sign next to the cursor while the shift key is pressed. If an entity is not already picked, then a plus sign will appear indicating that if clicked, this entity will be added to the pick set. If an entity is already picked, then a minus sign will appear indicating that if clicked, this entity will be subtracted from the pick set. To pick multiple object parts, you need to hold down the command and shift keys. Note that the command key allows you to pick object parts and the shift key allows you to pick multiple entities. Pick part is available. This lets you pick object parts similar to the previous pick tool but without having to hold down the command key. This can be useful when picking large numbers of topological parts. With the pick tool selected, the tool options palette displays additional topological level icons that are used only with this tool. This pick tool selects the object or the object part designated by the icon selected. Please note that you still need to hold the shift key down to select multiple entities. Area pick. It allows you to draw a rectangular or a regular border around or across a number of entities to be picked in one step. With the area pick tool selected, and default settings, click once to start dragging the frame. Click a second time to end the frame and all the objects completely inside the border will be selected. Additional parameters for controlling which object part to area pick and the shape of the border are determined in the tool options palette. Please note that with the area picking, the command key is not used to designate object parts. Area pick will only pick object parts based on the topological level icon selected. You can either pre-pick or post-pick objects for your operations. With the pre-pick method, use the pick tool first to pick the objects, then select the tool to be used on them second. Using the post-pick, you select the tool first, then pick the objects with that tool without using the pick tool. We will show an example of these two picking methods using the move tool. Keep in mind that the same technique is used for other tools as well. Let's try an example of pre-picking. We need to pick the objects first, so with the pick tool, select one or more objects. Remember to hold the shift key down for multi-picking. Second, activate the move tool. Note that the picked objects remain highlighted. Next, click once to start moving, and one more time to end moving. Notice that after ending the move, the objects remain highlighted. To deselect the objects, activate the pick tool and click any blank area. Now let's try an example of post-picking. 
With post picking, we need to select the tool first, so invoke the move tool without any entities picked. Second, we need to pick the objects. While holding the shift key down, select a few objects, then release the shift key. Click to start the move, then click again to end the move. Notice that the objects are no longer picked after the move has ended. Some tools require two or more distinctly different sets of operands to be picked, where each set may contain one or more objects. This is called picking sets and is accomplished using the shift key. For example, let's say we want to subtract all the objects that are parallel to the y-axis from all the objects that are parallel to the x-axis. The difference tool can be used to difference one set of objects from another set in only one operation. Obviously, we need to start by generating the cuboids as shown. Select the Boolean Difference tool. To select the first set of objects, hold the Shift key down, and then click on all the boxes that are parallel to the x-axis. The cursor is a plus sign to signify that you are adding objects to the set. When done picking the first set, release the Shift key and the cursor changes to a red star. Click a blank area and the picking of the first set is completed. To select the second set of objects, hold the shift key down again and select all the objects that are parallel to the y-axis. Again, the cursor changes to a plus sign to signify that you are adding objects to this set. When done picking, release the shift key and the cursor changes to a green arrow to signify the difference operation is ready to be executed. Click any blank area and the objects in the second set are difference from the first set of objects. Needless to say that if the difference operation were to be applied to two single objects, we don't need to press the shift key. Here is an example. Draw the two objects roughly as shown, and with the difference tool, click on one and then the other. The object you click second is subtracted from the object you click first. Some tools require that only certain object types or object parts be picked. When in post-pick mode, the current tool automatically enforces the pick of the appropriate type of entity. For example, the reshape tool only picks faces that are planar. When moving the cursor over an object, only faces are preview picked, not the whole object. In addition, only those faces that are planar are preview picked. Curved faces, such as a cylindrical face, are not preview picked and the cursor shows a red cross circle next to it, indicating that the face is not pickable for this operation. When activating a tool with one or more entities pre-picked, and the entities are not suitable for the operation. The offending entities are automatically removed from the pick set. For example, if you pre-pick two planar faces into cylindrical face with the pick tool, then select the reshape tool, the cylindrical face is automatically unpicked. This concludes our picking tutorial.